Hello, my name is Lisa, and I'm a librarian at the Fairfax County Public Library. This video will introduce you to the library's VHS Memory Depot station, where you can transfer your VHS or VHSC tapes to a digital format. Before I show you how to copy your home movies, I would like to share just a few important things that you'll need to know. You will need to bring something on which you can save your transferred video. When your session ends, your project will be automatically deleted from our computers. So you can bring a DVD, a USB flash drive, or an external hard drive that you can connect to the PC with your USB cable. Just be aware that if the security software on our PC detects that your device has some software that could be used to bypass our security settings, then our computer will not recognize your device. How much space will you need for your movie? It depends how long it is. An hour's worth long video will need about a gigabyte of space. The file that is saved will be an mp4 file. The recording happens in real time, so if your movie is 60 minutes, then it will take 60 minutes to transfer, plus there is some processing time needed to save the file. If your session is 3 hours, you would want to keep your recording time to 2 and a half hours. If your movie is longer than 2 and a half hours, you could stop recording at a good stopping point and come back another time to finish the rest of the movie. Your video sound is transferred, but you won't be able to hear it unless you bring headphones. The quality of your original tape will affect how your transferred movie looks. If your original tape has static, the digitized file will also have static. We recommend that you not use the fast forward or rewind buttons to scan through your video, since there is the possibility that your tape could get eaten by the VCR. When you are transferring your video, you will need to do one of three things to keep your video transfer session active. Even though the VCR is playing, the computer doesn't recognize that anything is happening. So, if you're watching the video as it transfers, you should move the mouse every 10 minutes or so to keep the computer awake. If you don't want to watch the movie, you could use the internet to keep the computer active. Or, if you want to step away from the computer, you could lock it using the session manager. That way, the transfer will keep going and no one else would be able to see what was happening on the screen. You would unlock the computer with a pass we will give you. And finally, this really is a self-service station. Some of our staff won't be familiar with how to work the equipment, so we have very detailed instructions and tips that are printed out in notebooks and also available on the Memory Depot Research Guide on the library website. So now let's get started. We've seen people really enjoy watching their old videos and giving them new life. All of the instructions can be found in this notebook, VHS Transfer Instructions, and also on the research um, guide, the Memory Depot Research Guide on the library website. So when I first get here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my flash drive. And in case you weren't using a flash drive and you bring a DVD instead, then I'll just show you how to do that. I'm going to press the eject button to open up the uh, DVD drive. This in, close that. Um, this will work with either a VHS tape or a VHS-C. I'm going to use a VHS-C and use one of our adapters. So I'll just put my tape in here. Make sure the VCR is on. And I'll go ahead and put that in. And I'm going to go ahead and just press stop just in case it automatically starts playing. So we use a software called Elgato Video Capture. I'm going to double click on that. And wait for that to open. The first thing it asks me is, what is the name of this movie? So this is a Halloween party. I'm just going to call it Halloween. And it asks me how long I think it is. Um, it could be 10 minutes, 30, 60, 90, 120, 180. And 30 minutes would take about 535 megabytes of hard disk space. There's more detailed information about the preferences here. I'm just going to leave these alone and click on continue. I'll also leave the video input and aspect ratio defaults as they are and click continue. And I'm going to continue past the connect audio. 
There are two boxes over here. One says automatically stop recording after that default time that I had set. If I check that, it will stop recording after that time. Um, the other one is mute sound. Even if I check this, it will still record with sound. And I'll go ahead and click on start recording. The only editing options that you have on these machines are trimming the beginning and the ending of your movie. So I'll click start recording. I'll press play on the VCR. And I'll wait for it to start playing. So as I said before, you'll either need to move the mouse to keep the session active, use the internet, or lock your PC using the session manager. The session, ma session manager can be found in this clock down here in the tray. I'll click on the clock, and if I lock the PC, then everything will still keep going as it is here, but um, the screen will, you won't see that screen. And then you'll unlock it with the pass that we give you. So I'm going to minimize that and let this play for another couple seconds. So now when my video has ended, I'm going to click on stop recording. I'll press stop on the VCR. And here I see two triangles at the bottom of this rectangle. This is where I can trim the beginning of the movie. So I'll start it from here. And I can trim the ending. This top triangle will show me what I have that will transfer. So now I'll click on continue. It's going to process. And then I'll add it to the Windows Media Player library. If I want to transfer it to a DVD, I would click on the Burn tab. But I'm going to use the Sync tab to transfer it to my flash drive. So I've clicked on Sync. I'm dragging my video from that panel over here to the Sync list. And then I'll click on Start Sync. When it finishes, I can view what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click on this PC down here, the icon in the tray on the screen, and click Memory Depot. It goes into a video folder automatically. I'll open that. And here is what I have saved. If I have more on my video to do, I can just do it again. I'll go back to the Elgato Video Capture software, and there's an Again option, and I will click on that, and I'll just go through the entire process again. And that's really all there is to do. When you're finished, make sure you take your VHS tape with you and inject your flash drive and DVD. And that's it.